Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up in the programme, we report from a fish market in Denmark on the big changes underway in our oceans. Climate change has a very strong role to play in the fact that we are, are catching the species here so far north now in, in Denmark. First, the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Here in Europe, we saw the cold spell from April continue into May, with temperatures 0.5 degrees Celsius below the 1991 to 2020 average. Overall, the climate figures for last month are all about contrasts, and you can see that in the map of surface air temperature anomaly. There's a clear disparity between the cold blue over Europe and then this area of red over Central Asia, where temperatures were five degrees above average last month. And then there were some real extremes. Inside the Arctic Circle, there was a brief surge of warm weather, with the village of Nizhnyaya Pesha hitting 31 degrees on the 20th of May. Moving on to precipitation anomalies, and we can see some parallels with the temperature map. Those areas which were warmer were also drier in Greece, Turkey and Russia. And then in northwestern Europe, it was just cold and damp. Wales actually had its wettest May on record with 245 millimetres of rain. Now to our report on the very significant effect that climate change is having on fish populations worldwide. Fish are particularly sensitive to changes in temperature and as the oceans warm, some species are moving northwards, others are arriving from the south, some are thriving and others are barely surviving. I went to Denmark to find out more. Here at the port of Gilalai, north of Copenhagen, the daily catch is being prepared for sale. These fishers are under pressure from restrictive quotas. They complain of agricultural runoff polluting the water, and they're also facing a new challenge from climate change. It means they're finding new kinds of fish in their nets, according to auctioneer Lasse Nordahl. We're starting to see species that we haven't seen here before so often. For example, there have been octopus this year. There have also been quite a lot of witch flounder in recent years. We didn't see them before when I started here. Red mallets are another species that has started to appear, not in large quantities. But it's a species that we're seeing more and more often. The reason fish are moving to new habitats is because they're cold-blooded animals that live close to their upper temperature threshold. So in Europe, some fish species are moving north, away from warmer waters. Scientist Mark Payne explains why. If you think about land, if it gets too hot, you can go and shelter under a tree or, or maybe burrow. Whereas the ocean tends to be much more um, uniform. There's, there's not shelter. There's, it's much, much more difficult to get respite from, from challenging conditions than it is on land. We travel to the Technical University of Denmark, where routine monitoring of Danish waters highlights the effects of climate change. There are two key trends, the arrival of species like tuna, hake and anchovy, and the decline of local fish like Baltic cod, according to researcher Louise Lundgaard. Today, a cod that's four years old is smaller than it would have been, for instance, 10 years ago. And that is because they focus more on reproducing than they do on growing. And that can be both because of the temperature of the water, the condition of the food, the amount of food, and other, a lot of factors. The changes seen here in Denmark are happening worldwide. So as the fish populations adapt to global warming, so should we. It certainly creates a challenge for all of the communities and businesses that are dependent on the ocean uh, all around our coastlines. They'll essentially be forced to adapt their, their fishing techniques, their fishing gear, how they store and process fish, um, and essentially also how they sell the fish uh, further down the, the supply chain. So it's really all the way through the entire fish processing industry, we expect there to be a need to actually cope with these changes. While the fishing industry adapts, we as consumers can do our part by buying fish which is considered sustainable. You can read more about it on euronews.com slash climate now, and I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.